Hi everyone, I hope you're well. We've had some very welcome announcements in the last 24 hours around extra financial support for Australians, including doubling the job seeker payment, previously known as New Start, not a bit great time to change the name, and relaxing the restrictions around it. However, thanks to the late announcement, there are long lines at Centrelink offices, people standing close to each other, and the online service has crashed. Every Australian should have been encouraged to sign up or update their account over the past month to protect their financial health and their physical health at the same time. I also welcome the new requirements to close places where people gather in groups, for example, restaurants being restricted to takeaways and deliveries. The best time to do that would have been when COVID-19 was declared a public health emergency of international concern at the end of January when Australia had 10 cases. The second best time to do that would have been 12 days ago when a pandemic was declared and we had 150 cases. But the third best time to do that is now as we're close to 2000 cases and that is we're at a critical point in time right now where we need to start flattening the curve today to avoid tragedy in our intensive care units in a week's time. Mandatory shutdowns, however, do highlight the need for an Australian Charter of Rights to define what's legal and acceptable in terms of restricting our freedoms for the sake of biosecurity and when we accept those restrictions and when those restrictions will be lifted. Regarding schools, school holidays are starting early in Victoria and New South Wales and the Northern Territory have officially declared that school is optional. Now there's a terrible balancing act going on right now between looking after children of people who work in critical industries and looking after teachers and the children they teach and there are no good answers here. On one hand, people who, for instance, perform chemotherapy and dialysis are wondering if they should stay home with their children. On the other hand, teachers are worried for their safety and the safety of the children they teach when, for example, the physical distancing rules are not possible to physically apply in every classroom. The one thing I will say is that we shouldn't stress too much over getting through the details of the school curriculum right now. The first half of the year has been disrupted and that's a given. Teachers are scrambling to create online learning resources, which to be honest is something they should have been resourced to do 20 years ago, but they will have those resources going forward now. But of course, many of us are worried about this and other things because we have had quite really quite poor communications from the people giving directions surrounding both the medical situation and what everything, uh, what it all means for society. Slow communication is disappointing, but actual divergent messages from state and federal ministers and state and territory um, and federal chief medical officers is unacceptable. We each have to take responsibility for our behaviour, of course, in places like supermarkets, but it is natural to have been worried about this when we're only now being reassured that Australia produces much more food than, it can, than we consume and there's no reason to think the supply chains will be disrupted and there's no plan to close supermarkets. Science communicators are filling these gaps, but they don't have the reach of a nationally televised press conference every day or two, so do seek out trusted news sources in this time. Keep those physical distances as, as much as possible when you're out, one and a half metres. So if you reach out your arms and the person next to you does as well, you shouldn't be able to touch each other. And remember that you can still go outside for a walk. And in fact, it's a good idea right now to get some sun and some exercise. Just say hi to anyone you pass from a safe distance.